Hey everyone, um, I took a short break from filming, but I'm back at it today. I'm going to try to make another recipe that I've been wanting to eat um, during quarantine, which is fajitas. And you wouldn't think that cashews had anything to do with fajitas. But today we are going to try and make vegan sour cream. I wasn't able to purchase a lot of things at the grocery store. It was just so packed and Robert and I could only carry so much in our terribly sad granny cart, which is almost lost a wheel. The poor thing is very nearly dead. I did manage to make the grocery, the previous grocery run stretch for three weeks. Hopefully if the avocados are ripe, I can make some guacamole and tortillas. Yes. Wish me luck. If you find yourself wanting to make seasonings from scratch, I would choose spices that are within a certain region and then you'll be able to share those spices for all of those recipes. So we're going to start with chili powder. Let's marinate the meat. I'm gonna do a little bit of oil. I have about a tablespoon left. So we'll just put this back in the fridge until we're ready to cook it. While I wait for the cashews to soak, I'm going to cut all of my vegetables. Uh, I usually have large bell peppers that I use, but since I'm using these small ones for another recipe as well, I thought I'd just get one bag of them, use the majority for the fajitas, and then use um, some of the other ones for the other recipe that I'm planning on making. So I've got peppers, we've got some garlic, and then I always use red onions when I'm making making um, Mexican or Tex-Mex recipes because it adds a little bit of sweetness in there which is really really nice. Time to attempt the vegan sour cream. So these have been soaking for about three and a half, four hours. Nice and rinsed. Uh, I had to rinse them a couple times to make sure that the water ran clear. And one half cup of water, one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon Mustard. Let's go. The consistency is about what I would expect given that I don't have a like Vitamix blender. So using the immersion blender, I don't think you're ever gonna get necessarily as smooth as a fully high power blender, but let's try it and see if it tastes any good. Um, the recipe you can modify by putting nutritional yeast in there um, to give it more of a cheesy flavor. Bottoms up. Yep. Tastes like ground up cashews. <laughs> 
with all of those ingredients combined. One more try. Yeah. I mean, it does taste sour, but it just it just tastes like ground up cashews to me. The tortillas will need to rest, so I'm going to make the dough now and have it sit for about 30 minutes. I'm going to do a double batch because if I don't eat all of them, then I can put the rest in the freezer, which is great. We'll start with flour. The original recipe is two and a half cups or 300 grams. Two teaspoons of baking powder. One teaspoon of salt. Stir. One half cup softened butter. Combine this until it is nice and flaky crumble. Two cups hot water. I'm just going to form enough of a dough so that the dough hook can take over. I feel like I had to add a lot more flour to it as it was working um, than I expected. So I think it's that I probably just added too much water in the beginning. I should have been more conservative with the water part of it. So probably less than two cups for a double batch. Start with like maybe one and a half and see where that gets us. But it seems to be okay now. The goal is to just make it so that it's not crazy sticky so that you can like actually work with it. It definitely is sticky still, but it's coming out fine. Yeah, see, so it's not, it's like sticky, but it's not sticking to the actual surface which is good. The original recipe is supposed to make eight tortillas, so I'm going to cut this into at least 16. All right, let's act like professionals here. How many grams is it? <laughs> that is so many grams. About 77 per those rest for 30 minutes. Since I have to wait for the dough to rest, I'm going to make the filling part of the fajitas first and then just put them in the warmed oven to keep warm. So I'll start with the veggies. Start with the aromatic soaked garlic and the I'll let those go for a bit. I have this awesome pan over here that's gonna be used for the meat. I was debating whether or not I should grill some avocado too, since avocados are not quite ripe yet, but I do want to have them with the fajitas, so in go the peps. I would have done this in the cast iron, but I need the cast iron for the tortillas. Let's switch burners. This stuff. With these ridged ones, I like spraying them instead. Oh, I almost forgot our fajita seasoning. So we have the leftover fajita seasoning. for tongs. Alright, the pan is smoking. Let's go. Mm. 
I don't know if I can fit both on here. I guess we can try. I feel like this one is a bit too long. Oh no! Alright. It'll shrink when it cooks. Let me sneak a peek on this and see how that is. Ooh, that's nice. I think it's about time to flip, to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna transfer this over here. And then put that, add them whole pieces into the oven. As I am a carnivore, I'm just going to <laughs> not even bother cleaning this. The good thing about using a firm avocado for this is that yeah, it doesn't fall to mush and you can actually put it on there. So if you find that your avocados are a little on the firmer side, but you definitely want to have them with whatever Tex-Mex cooking that you want, I recommend trying this at least once, see if you like it. I mean, it's kind of weird because you're eating a hot avocado, but at the same time, I think it's, uh, the, I mean, the alternative is no avocado, so. Let's cut it this way, I think, maybe? That way we get grill marks and everything. Ta 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 tortilla time! Let's do it! Ba -ba 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 they have rested well. It's been half an hour. And we are ready to go. Okay. Actually, using this for what it's for. We usually use this to make tay, which is like dumplings of all kinds. So let's see if I can actually get this to work. We'll give it a go. Squish! Oh! I saw it coming out a little there. <laughs> oh man! Okay, um, let's try that. Hopefully once this gets going, the flour is gonna be coating the thing well. You can do it. You can come off. This is usually why we also have this like cling wrapped instead of bare steel or whatever metal it is. They kind of, I mean, they shrink once they're pressed out. Hmm. <laughs> I think that's as good as it's gonna get. I usually don't do this, but it seemed like they were kind of thick. So I want to test one out to see if it's going to be the right thickness. So it doesn't look like it's going to stretch that much. So if I want to put these thinner, I will have to roll them out thinner, I think. The pan is smoking a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it. Ah, doesn't look bad. It's got some color. All right, I've called for reinforcements. <laughs> I need you to take the done tortillas which I'm going to be working on here. And then once they're done, you need to bring them over to the cast iron and then you'll brown them in the cast iron on one side, flip it over, brown them on the other side, and then we'll put them on this plate here and then just cover it with a cloth, okay? Yeah. What's happening? Uh, it's expanding. Oh, that's exciting. I don't know if it's supposed to do that. <laughs> That's done. Okay, maybe it'll deflate. <laughs> so I had this in the oven. It was at 200 degrees and it looks like it juiced out a bunch. So I think that it didn't cook all the way through, but it's looking pretty cooked right now. So I don't know if we're going to get delicious rare meat like how I had hoped we were going to get. This is definitely soupy down here, but I mean, we can drain that, so let me cut this, I guess, and see. No! Cooked. Wah, wah. Are you excited? Yes, it's gonna be delicious. Meat! I'll put meat, I guess, on this side, and then I'll put some veggies on the other side, and we can go through this one steak first. I think the flavor will be good regardless. But... It still seems pretty tender. Yeah, it's actually, um, it is pretty soft. Alright. Oops. 
Let's see. It looks good. Yeah, try that. Tell me what you think of that. I don't know what it is. <laughs> It's vegan sour cream. Does it taste like vegan sour cream? Tastes like something. <laughs> Not bad. Isn't that bad? Did you taste it? I did, yeah. I oh. tasted it and then I put it in the fridge. And then I um, I didn't taste it after I took it out of the fridge. But oh. yeah, I tasted it before. So it, yeah, it turned out pretty good, I think. 